Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Having an inspiring start today, but time to bring our feet firmly back down to earth and a responsibility that all of us share to tackle global climate change. It's been on the horizon for many, many years, but not enough is being done now. Hundreds of thousands walked across the globe to highlight the issues that are pertinent at the moment, obviously ahead of the Global Climate Change Summit that is about to take place today in New York. Of course, international leaders from across the globe, including our own President Jacob Zuma, are there. But let's first remind ourselves of exactly what is at stake. One day, we will wake up to find we have literally changed the face of the Earth. We have never faced a crisis this big, but we have never had a better opportunity to solve it. We have everything we need to wake up to a different kind of world. What is needed is a concerted effort. We can make today the day we turn toward the solutions we need. We can make today the day we chart a new course together. We have every reason in the world to act. We can't wait until tomorrow. You can choose today to make a world of difference. Even at this time of the day, it is a beautiful planet and it is ours to safeguard and protect. Um, I'd really like to offer a very warm welcome um, to someone who is at the heart of um, what has been happening here in South Africa and globally, Samantha Bailey from 350degrees.org. Samantha, thank you so much for joining us. Um, what a monumental task ahead of us, something that has been, I think, front of mind for a very long time, but for some reason, <laughs> we are resistant. Political energies are... Um, resistant to global climate change. Where do we sit in terms of our current global climate and, and what is at stake here in your mind? Well, Graham, it is such a frustrating situation because the science is giving us really clear indications of what we need to do. Uh, we've got a lot of research, for instance, in South Africa that shows that we can supply energy needs via a combination of energy efficiency and renewables. And yet we keep sticking to the old solutions, the coal, the nuclear, the fracking that we think are going to be reliable in the face of all sorts of evidence that is saying it's too expensive, it's destructive, it's not the way to go. I think what we're facing here is an inertia in the, in the political system that is that has been captured by very powerful fossil fuel in, uh, interests that have they're incredibly um, wealthy they can bribe they can use their money in all sorts of ways so we have leaders making very bold statements they're likely to emerge from new york saying we're going to do this and we're going to do of that grandstanding, yeah. and yet when they come home then they're implementing exactly the opposite sort of plans um yeah so that's that's, that seems to then put the impetus on us, the individuals, the exactly. voting constituencies, to make the change not only in our own lifestyles, but the message that we are sending out there. What message are we sending at this year's Global Summit? What we're saying to leaders is it's enough talk. We are tired of talk. It's been 20 years of talking, and in that time, our emissions have risen 60%. We're getting closer and closer to runaway climate change on a scale we have never encountered before. And what's, what's so frustrating is that it's the... Frontline communities that are hit hardest are the ones that are marginalized communities, low-income communities. They're the ones paying the price for all this grandstanding that's happening. Well, you know, that being said, what does that say for our African continent? If the powerhouse economies of the globe are resistant to change, where do we sit as the African continent um, in the grand scheme? Well, what I hope is that we make wiser decisions and that we really learn from the lessons of what's happening in the West and how they are... Um, they're, they're, they're cutting their nose off to spite their face, in a sense. Um, we, we have unbelievable renewable sources. We could switch to economies that, that support much more decentralized, community-based um, energy projects. Our, our municipalities out there, our local municipalities that are stro so struggling for income in remote areas, they've got sunshine, they've got wind. They could be doing some amazing things and getting the finances they need to help better, uh, provide better basic services to their communities. So the solutions are there. It's, it's the need for us to get on the streets, to be mobilizing and organizing, to be pushing our leaders to actually do what they need to do in the face of all this power that the fossil fuel industry has. 
Now, we know that it can often be um, a little bit overwhelming to look at the bigger picture. When we bring it back down to the individual, what can we do as individual South Africans in our everyday life to start making a, a, a difference, to start turning the tide? Sure. Uh, the, the, the best thing to do is to talk to as many of your friends as possible and really help raise awareness around the fact that this huge battle that seems almost impossible to fight is actually doable. Uh, we have a history in South Africa of changing something that people thought was not possible. We actually have a lot of um, uh, knowledge about community organizing, about um, getting out there, talking to our leaders, doing creative actions, getting it in the media, starting to show that there is a, an impetus amongst the people for something that is different, that is right, that is more ethical, that is more sustainable. Um, we actually know a lot about what we need to do. It's just sometimes getting ourselves out of our comfortable armchairs and starting to do a bit more than what, uh, what is, you know, changing our light bulbs. We need to go further than that. Yep, South Africa could be that watershed moment. Samantha, yes. thank you so much. We'll have all the details of how you guys can reach Samantha and get in touch and do something in your own life. Well, we've still got lots coming up on the show this morning. You and what's up next, son?